I briefly referenced this article in my last video, but I want to talk about this in further detail because I think the article does a really good job at articulating something that I've been saying for the past couple of years. The article looks at this in a more conservative lens and I find some highlights on this article that is just utterly cringe, but I want to talk about the culture war in video games on the perspective of your average gamer. I am someone who doesn't really care about politics, especially American politics. I care more about video games and I care more when this medium that I love is under attack by partisan politics. I've talked about so many times on this channel about the ridiculous attacks towards video games from the left and also the right. Remember that White House video about violence in video games thing? Yeah, talk about that. That was dumb. There was also the article on the Gaming Addiction Panic video, essentially praising the incredibly flawed gaming addiction classification from the WHO because it can help prevent mass shootings. The attacks from the right towards entertainment media are less frequent and less powerful, but the attacks from the left are very frequent and severely more powerful. There's no denying that a culture war exists. There's no denying that partisan politics try their hardest to use entertainment or video games as a megaphone for their politics. I've talked about Ubisoft and many other game devs being pressured to have their politically neutral games to make political statements of some sort. And that's why I can't wait for Ubisoft's take on post-Brexit Watch Dogs Legion. No, seriously. But that's not all. Just recently, Chris Avalon, the writer of Fallout 2, Neverwinter Nights, Planescape Torment, and many other classics, got criticized by the fringe far-left progressives for simply saying that it's possible for games to be apolitical. I don't know why, I mean, it's possible for video games to not be a megaphone for a particular worldview and just be no-nonsense entertainment. I mean, how are you going to extract the politics from Tetris? Except maybe if you're an editor for Polygon. Now, just because this culture war exists, not just in video games but entertainment in general, that doesn't mean that you should stress yourself out and participate on it 24-7. I'm not encouraging you to watch channels that highlight this depressing and ongoing culture war, and yes, that technically means my channel, and yes, I absolutely endorse clicking out of this video and do something better like pet your waifus or something. Point is, the culture war can be draining and boring, but there are definitely great things out there that you can enjoy. I myself am tired of the culture war a lot of times, and you know what I did? I just watched tech channels on YouTube and build some PCs in a simulated space and play some visual novels with good waifus. There's absolutely no problem in trying to get out of the many stressful things in real life. After all, that is the entire purpose of escapist entertainment. But some people don't want you to escape. They want you to care about their issues, even though you don't care about them. This article is just a briefing on what's going on with the culture war, or as I'd like to call it, ideologues who want everyone else to suffer as much as they do. Again, it's written from a conservative perspective. Perspective. In fact, I don't think it's written by someone who plays video games. I don't think video game is the last bastion of conservative culture. Maybe if you're talking about games from the late 2000s, but Western video games have been rather progressive lately, and even Japanese video games are far from what I'd call conservative. That depends on who you ask though, see this video for more detail. It would be easy for conservatives to throw up their hands and say game over, let the left win and make gaming into another safe space. And this is my first contention with this article. I don't want to make this culture war a left versus right thing. I don't want this entertainment space to be a safe and exclusive space for specific groups only. The political alignments shouldn't matter. What should matter is your love for the entertainment medium. It shouldn't be about left versus right. It should be about gamers, weebs, or geeks in general to reject the regressive ideas from the left and the right. We've seen that both sides are capable of producing regressive ideas that threatens freedom and creativity and fun in entertainment media even in recent times. Your politics shouldn't matter. It's your love for this medium that matters. Here's another part that I find contention with. Gamers are facing a new threat worse than any monsters they have ever encountered. I am perfectly aware about the threat of regressive politics and criticisms towards video games, but don't compare that to the monsters that we fight in games. That just automatically undermines the seriousness of your argument and makes you you look like a boomer saying, how do you do, fellow gamers? Ryder goes on to talk about Phil Spencer's statement, which I talk about in another video, where he essentially tries to appeal to the moral guardians in the far left to combat sexism, hate speech, and misogyny. While this is a stupid statement from Phil Spencer, I wouldn't say that this is something that would make Orwell in awe. That's a gross exaggeration, and the fact that they call themselves the defenders of joy is more comedic to me than actually friending. And what's with measuring how many times he 
he says safe and safety. That's a very odd nitpick. Anyway, the writer continues by saying that the recently updated Xbox community standards had similar rhetoric, warning that if you're looking for a place on the internet to be overly edgy or get that rise out of people, Xbox isn't the place for you. The writer then says that it didn't explain what overly edgy means, which will guarantee that the players will be afraid to say anything that might offend the censors. Yeah, uh, here's the problem. I check on the link that you cited and there actually are examples in what being overly edgy means, or at least some of them are very clear, like uploading a gamer pic that shows real life graphic violence, send someone a picture that's meant to shock or disgust, so you can't exactly recommend 266146. However, most of them are pretty vague, like making provocative religious comments in your profile okay, what if the person is actually a religious Muslim and saying God is great in Arabic? Name a club after a highly controversial figure, use your activity feed as a platform to promote controversial topics, and upload a club profile picture that has similar imagery used by hate groups. On whose standards? At any of those points? Yes, these rulings are mostly pretty vague, but I've yet to see this implemented so much to the point where people are actively complaining about it. Not that Xbox's community is something that you should be using for socializing with people anyway, I've seen tin can phones with better social features, so let's move on. The writer then continues to talk about an article called From Fortnite to Alt-Right. I actually responded to this article on my meme stream because it's actually way too freaking long for a video, and it has so much BS that it would make a really boring video. And yes, more boring than this one. One of the article's point is quite hilarious, so I'm just gonna leave this meme stream clip to respond to that point. So let me get this straight. You have this article saying something along the lines of, you know, these white supremacist recruiters, they, they are recruiting gamers because they, they, they're trying to convince them that, that, that the SJWs are taking over. Mm, those, those, those horrible SJWs, they're taking over. And then the article is like, oh, let's take over gaming. Let's make sure that we take games seriously and freaking moderate their communities properly. I'm, excuse me, you just said something along the lines of, oh, but these SCWs, they're not taking over gaming. They're just, it's just a bunch of people of color, women, and LGBTQ people in the gaming circles. But then you said, oh, we need to moderate their communities properly. Wow. C congratulations You played yourself. Anyway, that article is mentioned alongside many other articles talking about how gaming can be used as a breeding ground for white supremacists, and gaming culture is a source for toxicity, including racism, misogyny, and death threats. The Guardian being... Well, The Guardian has the most of the hot takes, and one of which I actually responded in another video. Then I find a take from the writer of that Fortnite to Alt-Right article that I find very interesting. In a later interview with Vox, he derided the right-wing gamers for wanting to enjoy life as unapologetic white males and for wanting to not worry about politics. That's actually the same criticism that Chris Avalon got from a verified user on Twitter who said, claiming that stories can avoid politics is the humble brag of privilege and pisses on the majority audience whose lives can't avoid politics. They are practically saying that you shouldn't have fun because other people can't have fun. It's fun privilege. Sounds like a good title for a video. The article then talks about Mark Kern, who is an awesome dude. I love him. He's great. He's the team leader of World of Warcraft, he developed Diablo 2, and he talked many times about political correctness and the social justice takeover. He's right when he said that politically correct culture war is not limited to games. It's being pushed into every aspect of our life, like animes, comic books, films, etc. Because, once again, fun is privilege, and you cannot have fun when others suffer. Moving on from the hot takes, the article talks about blacklisting. This part is actually really well written and it talks about so many game developers or even journalists who got blacklisted for disagreeing with the narrative. There's an article from Niche Gamer written by Sophia Narwitz that talk about the journalist Blake Harris who defended Palmer Lucky and get ostracized by it. There's the last night developer Tim Soray who might talk about in detail in a video two years ago and my god that was a bad video. He essentially criticized radical feminism back in the 2014 and that's why he got blacklisted. 
blacklisted. I think this is also a more concerning issue to talk about. The blacklisting of individuals on the industry, thanks to having different worldviews, is a problem. It creates an exclusive space only for those who have the right opinion, and it's not good for the gaming industry, especially for the very talented people out there. But unfortunately, like the issue of crunch culture, which I talk about more in this video, it's something that we don't really have too much power into. It depends on company per company, and we as consumers can only say, this is wrong, and this shouldn't happen. I don't really know much about how to deal with the industry blacklisting or crunch culture in general, but what I do know is that this is a problem, and unfortunately, we as consumers sometimes excuse these problems because we care too much about the product and less about the people who develop them. But that's just the harsh reality of the gaming industry. We as consumers can't do much other than saying this is bad and maybe not buy their products. It's up to the game developers themselves who suffer from both of these issues to take action and find ways to make their life better. And while we're talking about crunch, I noticed that the people on the fringe left always portray the consumers as apathetic to the entire issue of game developers suffering from crunch. Which isn't entirely wrong, but that doesn't mean that there aren't any good reasons for consumers to be apathetic. Consumers only care about the quality of the end product. They can't really judge how much suffering that the developers have gone through to make that product. There's nothing much that the consumers can do to solve this issue. So if you want the consumers to help you solve the problem of crunch culture, at the very least, tell us what to do and how our contribution would help. Finally, we get to the final paragraphs of this article, and this is where my biggest contention lies. Players do not win games like Fortnite based upon victimhood status. They win by skill alone. The fight for gaming culture is a huge opportunity for conservatives. Writer, stop comparing video game activities with the real world. It makes you sound like a boomer. And no, the fight for gaming culture isn't a huge opportunity for conservatives. It's a fight for gamers, not just conservatives, not just liberals. It's a fight for all gamers from different political spectrums. I want people to know that we shouldn't make this culture war to be a war between our side and their side. Don't make this to be about left and right politics because frankly, we've seen both sides try to undermine all the entertainment that we love. For me, this isn't about politics. This is about protecting my most valued entertainment media as a gamer from misinformation, from all the moral guardians who are spreading misinformation and justifying their moral outrage to try to ban or censor these things. This is about protecting the thing that I love the most. Gaming has, at its core, always been about overcoming impossible odds, slaying monsters, and defending kingdoms from invasion. The latest main quest for all gamers is to take back society itself. <sighs> Bruh. The latest main quest for all gamers is to take back society itself? That is a much better video title. That is so overly dramatic that I just can't take your previous points seriously anymore. Even if we put aside the very boomer thing of comparing fictional struggles to real life struggles, I'm not here for some grand quest to fix society. I'm not some savior of the gaming space. I'm just some dude on YouTube who makes garbage videos and people sometimes watch them. I don't want this culture war to be turned into some sort of a militaristic thing. The culture war is real, but there's not much that you can do about it other than voicing your opinions and concerns. There's nothing wrong with defending the things that you love, but the moment you're going to the offensive and justify doing the actions from the fringe extremists simply because you don't like them, that's where you should just stop for a moment and think. Do you seriously think that these people would stop? No. They won't stop. There are many things on this world that are beyond your control. This culture war is one of them. Since it's beyond our control, we can't do much to make a positive change. You know what isn't beyond your control? You. I too am tired of this culture war, and I've aired my opinions for years at this point, but I realize that there's nothing that I can do to stop it, and it's gonna keep getting worse and worse. There's nothing wrong with calling out these bad politics and bad business practices, but if that's all I do, I'll get exhausted, and so will you. If you got exhausted by this stupid culture war, if you got depressed and tired of this entire thing, I suggest you to rest. You might not have the power to change society, but you have the power to change yourself. You have the power to make yourself better. You have the control to make your life better. I simply want people to just enjoy life. Play video games and fap to some doujins or something.